the real you needs to connect to the real God. So what, what is God? God is a soul as well. You could say God is the great oversoul, if you like. Remember, we always say that God has divine love and divine truth are the primary characteristics of the soul. And that probably is so that's something we need to bear in mind. But God's soul has attributes and qualities. Very, very similar, in fact, attributes and qualities to our own soul, but far more infinite in capacity. The reason why is because we, our soul, was created in God's image. So, so the qualities and attributes that exist in our soul exist in God's soul, but to a far more powerful degree. And in fact, in fact to an infinite degree. So there's God's soul, there's our soul. How do the, those two souls talk? Well, the only way they're going to be able to talk is soul to soul. Now, if, we, if our soul is our emotions, our passions, our desires, our intentions and so forth, then wouldn't it make sense then that the way we talk to God is through those things? Can you see that? The way we actually speak with God is through those things. It's not actually the words that we speak. It's not actually the thoughts that we have. But it's actually the emotions and the feelings that are within us that we direct to God, that God hears. So if we term, use the term hearing in terms of God's hearing our prayer and hearing in the sense of our hearing God's response, the hearing will all occur at the soul level. Does that make sense to everyone? All prayer is a soul-to-soul -soul connection. A soul-to-soul -soul connection, your soul connecting with God's soul. Now, obviously, when you connect to your own soul, usually you connect to it emotionally. When you connect to other people, generally you connect with them emotionally. So it's the same with your connection with God. It's to do with your emotional connection, your passion connection, your desire connection, your intentions and all those things. All of those things are your connection with God. So obviously, if I don't develop myself emotionally, if I don't deserve to develop my desires and passions, obviously I'm going to have a lower capacity to connect to God than if I develop all of those things. And that's why, all through up till now, we've spoken a lot about emotions and a lot about passion, a lot about desire, because these are the ways in which we connect to God. So, our soul, having a longing for God, connects God with our soul through this thing that I've used, the term Holy Spirit. Now, this is not some, some religious type of connotation. It's an actual physical energy force that God uses from God's soul to our soul. And it's like a pipeline through which communication occurs. And in, in, in specifically, this Holy Spirit is the pipeline, if you like, or the conduit for divine love to flow between the two souls. So remember we've spoken about that before in, in some of the other sessions that we've had. <coughs> so the Holy Spirit, and the reason why it's called the Holy Spirit by celestial spirits is because it's the one spirit of God or the one attribute of God that is specifically for the transmission of divine love from God's soul into your soul. Now, God can also transmit other emotions and feelings and energies into your soul through other methods. God has a creative energy, for example. Your life breath or your life force is a part of that creative energy. That's an energy that God gives to all living things. But that's not what I'm talking about here. This is a specific energy, the Holy Spirit, the you could think of it as the greatest energy God has in terms of influencing your soul. And it's the pipeline or the connection between God's soul and your soul. Now, once that connection is made, then divine love can throw, flow through the connection. Now, next week in Brisbane, we'll be having a talk about prayers for divine love. And we'll be concentrating specifically on what maintains the connection between yourself and God through the Holy Spirit with regard to uh, receiving divine love. So that's next week. Today what we're doing is talking more generally about prayer itself 
and what kind of prayers God can hear from you and what kind of prayers God can't hear from you. <coughs> or we should more specifically say, cannot due to the laws involved that God has created. So, can we see our focus, our focus over the next few days, and the focus today is going to be in particular the focus of not the prayer for divine love, but just prayer generally. Next week will be a focus on the prayer for divine love, and then there'll be a later in another session, prayer for divine truth. But today we're looking at the general characteristics of prayer, what kinds of things we can pray for, what kinds of things we'll have difficulty praying for, and so forth. Does that make sense? So that's what we're focusing now. How our soul can communicate with God's soul, and we'll also talk about how God's soul responds. <coughs>